Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. I want to take a quick look at what's going on with Jose and Maria. And then I am leaving Wilmington, North Carolina. Going to go up here to Kitty Hawk, which is just off the map here. And uh, just do some testing while there is an entity offshore that's bringing some impacts. Going to test a new archive camera system and uh, set up a live camera or two. One in Rodanthe and one up in Kitty Hawk. So... It's a field mission, but I'm not expecting anything major up that area, up that area, up that way, in that area. But it is an opportunity to do some more testing and some coverage from that area. So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, probably getting in the Tahoe here in just a little bit. So if you have our app, just real quick, uh, Hurricane Impact, if you have it already on the iPhone or your Android device, you're going to want to be sure to check in to the video, the live cams section, and you'll be able to watch the Tahoe cam. And we already have a camera up in Fire Island on Long Island, New York, from a friend of ours that we are restreaming into the app. So check into Hurricane Impact after you watch this video. All right? So what's going on out there? Well, here is Jose, and uh, there's the center of circulation probably. And it's definitely gotten larger. It's got sort of a comma shape to it. Uh, large hurricane, 90 mile per hour winds or so, and this is Maria, and I think that Maria has become a hurricane, according to some of the latest data. We'll wait for the official word from the National Hurricane Center. So let's just get into a quick uh, view of the particulars. The 11 a.m. advisory, since there are no watches or warnings for land areas, we don't have any intermediate advisories, and so as of 11 a.m. this morning, 90 miles per hour are the top winds, and it is moving uh, north at eight miles per, or nine miles per hour. Maria, uh, probably a hurricane now. And again, in less than an hour, the new advisory package will be out. And I'll do another video update late tonight, and we'll talk about that. So real quick on Jose and what's happening with its track. No major changes. Moving basically north, going to turn eastward. And then we just need to see what happens. Does it kind of mill around around here? Does it die out over this colder water? And I'm going to tell you, what happens with Jose probably will affect what happens with Maria. Uh, and just a quick reminder for you folks along the East Coast and the Southeast Coast, not everywhere, but the beaches that are you know facing the ocean the most, um, and I know you say, well, what does that mean? The direction of the swells, and it just depends as this goes by. For example, once Jose gets farther north, above 35 latitude here, then the swells are really cut down in South Carolina, as an example. But they will increase for the southern-facing beaches of New England. Okay, that's what I meant by that. Bottom line, go to the Weather Service homepage, make sure you put in your zip code for the area that you're interested in, and look for beach hazard statements, um, the high surf advisory, coastal flood advisory, anything like that for the area that you are interested in, and you can get a lot of good info about what to expect and be careful out there uh, it is hazardous when you have these big swells breaking right on the beach so the afternoon model plots overall this curve off to the east with time and then maybe sort of this southeast motion we'll just have to see have to see what's left how much of an influence this has in the atmosphere at eroding the ridge and then that will probably have a big bearing on what happens with Maria now Speaking of Maria, obviously a lot of attention, uh, rightfully so, placed on uh, the islands over here. And maybe a bit of good news is uh, you can clearly see that Antigua and Barbuda uh, are not within the envelope here of the guidance any longer. So that's good. Uh, however, a little bit up here to the north, you have the Anguilla and the St. Martin area and um, St. Bartolome and then you have St. Kitts and Nevis in here, and then over here the U.S. British Virgin Islands. So I think that the moral of the story is this has maybe gone a little bit more west before this turn begins, and so the extreme northeast corner of these islands may not be as at risk so much as the U.S. British Virgin Islands might be, and particularly Puerto Rico later on. So we'll have to watch this very closely. A fairly tightly clustered package of uh, models here the envelope is not very you know we don't have anything going up like this and over here and all kinds of wildness it's a very tightly clustered bundle of wires so to speak and the further out in time you get of course 
the more divergence there will be in the models, as you would expect. Um, so overall, towards the southeast Bahamas, perhaps, skirting uh, maybe over the coast of the Dominican Republic, but maybe a direct hit here on Puerto Rico, and we just have to see how strong at that point. Now, going back to the GFS ensembles here, I want to point this out. This is interesting. The ensembles are sort of our what if, and that is a whole bunch of different members of the operational run with different variables to give you different outputs. Now, in this scenario, you have a bunch of different tracks, you know, that go up this way, and so it looks like this tree or this fountain, if you will. This is not tightly clustered in the long range, but until you get until about a week out or so, which is right here, and let's revisit what I just said, a week out. <laughs> it's a week away. These models go out to 240 hours, these endpoints, folks. That's 10 days. That's September 27th, still on the map. That is incredible in and of itself. For the ACE points, the accumulated cyclone energy, which is the amount of wind energy expended by these systems, is going to be incredible this year. It's definitely going to challenge the records and we're not even into October yet but the bottom line for the first several days a fairly tight envelope you know right there uh, and then after that and you can look at the mean here the average and that's this red one that I'm drawing over with blue and it does curve away from the US uh, and you go yay that's wonderful and of course if it were to be exactly right that would be wonderful for everybody that lives along here for obvious reasons but I have to remind you, before you celebrate too much, this is day 8, 9, and 10 that that happens. Can you imagine what the forecast error is if that was an official track forecast? Got to be several hundred miles. So a lot's going to have to do with what happens with Jose, and if it comes up and mills around up here and erodes the ridge away, then Maria has a clear shot uh, to turn away. But that's so far out in time that we cannot put all of our stock in that, just like we cannot say, oh, look at today's model run, it actually hits the United States by a couple of models. We can't put all of our stock in those models either. It's just for guidance, and especially at the longer ranges, we need to remember that it, these models are prone to a lot of errors. Now, it says Hurricane Maria here. This is the automatic guidance that's updated, and so I guess they're finding that it is uh, perhaps hurricane intensity, but again, officially at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll know for sure. Either way, the intensity envelope is for the most part fairly tightly clustered, insisting on category two, three, maybe a four. You know how this goes, though. It could either be weak the whole time and it struggles and people are like, oh, what's going on? Or, as we saw with the Irma, unfortunately, it overperforms the cyclone and we get a big problem. So we got to watch all of this closely. We have to make sure that our friends, our acquaintances, our fellow human beings, and our fellow animals, whoever is still existing down in the islands, that they are acutely aware of what's coming and make sure they do everything they can to protect themselves because people are exposed, they're tired, they're weakened. You know, their spirits might be strong as they band together, but there's only so much you can take, even from Mother Nature, right? And so we have to do our part to try to boost that up and help these people out in whatever way we can and I can do that with some information here feel free to pass this along and I'm gonna keep these updates coming like I said I'm getting ready to jump in the Chevy Tahoe uh, and actually it's gonna be the backup Chevy Tahoe we purchased uh, another one that's exactly the same year with half the miles it's a twin literally it just doesn't have all the weather gear on it it's a backup vehicle because the original Tahoe seems to be having a problem with the starter. When I start it, or go to start it, it makes this rapid clicking sound, and I don't have time to monkey with it, obviously, so I'm just going to jump in the backup Tahoe, which seems to work fine, and make my way up to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, set up some equipment like I mentioned, uh, a weather station down on Rodanthe, two live cameras, plus we have the live camera from Fire Island from a friend of ours, and all of that is streaming into our app. So. These updates go in the app. Our Twitter stuff's in the app. If you've got the app, check it out. Make use of the money you gave to me for your support and use that app. It's a good utility, I'm telling you. And a lot of you already know that. Anyway, I'll be working hard, and I'll set up some equipment, and I'll have another video update for you uh, probably eight hours or so from now after the 0Z GFS runs. All right? 
Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com in Wilmington now, but I'll be in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, later this evening, and I'll have much more for you from there.